point. This tool supports the weight of the balance shaft during removal and installation and helps guide it through its bearings. Don't try to remove the drive gear or thrust plate from the balance shaft as they are all serviced as an assembly. Due to the non-freewheeling design of the 3.7 liter, it's important that you don't rotate the crankshaft without the timing chains attached and the camshafts properly timed. To install the balance shaft, start by applying a light coat of engine oil to each of the journals on the shaft. Again, using special tool number 8641, carefully guide the balance shaft into the block. When the balance shaft is in place, install the bolts for the thrust plate, finger tight only. For proper thrust plate alignment, position the right side of the thrust plate and install the right chain guide bolt and finger tighten. Now you can tighten the thrust plate retaining bolt to 28 newton meters or about 250 inch pounds. Remove the right chain guide bolt so that the guide can be aligned and installed. When you reassemble the timing drive system, be sure to line up the timing mark on the idler gear with the mark on the balance shaft drive gear. A new camshaft wrench, Essential Special Tool number 8428, is used to rotate the camshaft slightly when installing the cam sprocket on a 3.7 liter engine. Do not use this tool when tightening the cam sprocket bolt, though. To make sure that the balance shaft is timed correctly, you can check the position of the timing mark with the timing drive system assembled. Again, make sure that the engine is at top dead center. And also, be sure that both V6 marks on the camshaft sprockets are in the 12 o'clock position. The timing mark on the balance shaft, which is visible behind the secondary timing chains, should be in the 6 o'clock position. Remember that setting the proper base timing on these engines is critical to avoid damage to pistons, valves, and other components. Now, let's review the information we've covered before moving on. We saw some components and features that are specific to the 3.7 liter engine and what makes the 4.7 HL different from the base 4.7 liter engine. Next, we learned that the 3.7's timing drive system is similar to that on the 4.7 liter, with the exception of the balance shaft, which we saw the removal, installation, and timing procedures for. In our last segment in this month's program, you'll see the differences in sealing materials used in a 3.7 liter and both 4.7 liter engines. While it's true that the 3.7 and 4.7 engine family has many similarities, there are variations in the sealing materials used for the bed plate and front cover, both during manufacturing and service, that you need to know about. When you're performing service that involves removing either the front cover or bed plate, be sure to pay close attention to the procedure detailed in the service information. The procedure may call for different sealing materials than used when the engine was built. For example, the bed plate on the 3.7 liter engine is originally sealed with an anaerobic sealant. For service, however, RTV sealant is used, so you need to install the bed plate before the RTV begins drying. It's a different story for the 4.7 and 4.7 HO. RTV is used to seal the bed plate at the engine plant and RTV is also used for service. It's important to note that you should not use Mopar bed plate sealant to install the bed plate on any of these engines. The perimeter of the front cover on the 3.7 liter is originally sealed with the anaerobic sealer, while RTV is used to seal it after service. In either case, the only gaskets used are the three O-rings for the cooling passengers. On the other hand, 
the 4.7 liter and the HO motor use a gasket to seal the entire front cover surface, both during manufacturing and service. As you can see, when dealing with these engines, you shouldn't assume anything, or you could run into real problems. It's always the best choice to consult the service information. It's there for you to use. Whether you utilize these resources via the MDS-2 or in printed formats, the service information lists exactly what you need to do to get the job done right. If you're wondering where you can find other service information relevant to these engines, sign up for the instructor-led training class entitled 3.7 liter and 4.7 liter engines, course number 0141008. Or review the September 1998 Master Tech that covered the 4.7 liter engine in Jeep Grand Cherokee. Well, that wraps up this month's program. On a side note, it's important that you remember to record any diagnostic trouble codes on the repair order for the vehicle you're servicing. An article in this month's Tech News has the details on how this helps with warranty claims. Next month, we'll cover all the service highlights of the new Dodge Ram pickup. Thanks for watching.